Hi there, this is Jason Kahn. I had an interesting case that I wanted to share with all of you, so let's jump right into it. The background story is we had a young male in his 40s uh, with relatively good oral hygiene. He shows up for a filling or two uh, once or twice a year, uh, and he presented to his recall appointment with asymptomatic localized moderate gingivitis buckle to his 1.6, and this area probed into the frication uh, about 5 or 6 millimeters, so it was deemed a class 2. Uh, diagnosis was made that he had localized moderate periodontitis and the treatment performed uh, was localized scaling or root planing for the next year or so. This was a copy of the bite wing. You can see that there's a very clear frication lesion going on. Another thing to notice would be that the rest of his periodontal health appears to be pretty good. And over the course of the year, his signs weren't getting any better and he developed some bite sensitivity that was persisting. So at this point, a PA was taken, and we can see that there appears to be some widening occurring around the palatal root. So at this point, he was referred to me, and we took a CT scan to better evaluate the anatomy and possibility of a fracture. We could see that there's a mesial lesion in addition to the frication lesion in one slice. And when we checked another slice, we could see not only is there a distal lesion, but there also appears to be an additional canal that drains into the frication. Vitality testing confirmed that this tooth was necrotic, and so rather than be periodontal disease in origin, it was determined that this was a chronic apical abscess draining through the buccal frication. It also turns out that he had a composite placed on this tooth three months before his recall appointment, and it appears to have contacted the mesial buccal pulp horn. So endodontic therapy was completed for this tooth, and you can see in the bottom PA uh, that the frication canal was also cleaned and obturated. Unfortunately, because this frication was root planed and the healthy periodontal tissues were removed, it's unlikely that this bone is going to fill back in here, and so this pocket is going to have to be maintained uh, going forward indefinitely. And so our takeaway from this case is that periodontal and endodontic pathologies can have similar presentations. And if we make a diagnosis without excluding a common differential, we can perform unnecessary treatment that can be irreversible in nature. And that goes for both endodontic and periodontal therapy. So it's important to make a complete diagnosis uh, just by checking vitality to see if it's endodontic in origin or periodontal. And getting a second opinion or a second set of eyes on a case before treatment's performed is always a good idea because these cases can be quite difficult to diagnose. Thanks very much for watching, and as always, if you have any questions about this case or anything else, uh, don't hesitate to send me an email. Uh, otherwise, thanks very much for watching, and I appreciate uh, all the feedback and questions that I've had so far.